Okay, so we, we just kind of discussed um, connecting to time-like events. So if there's an event that falls within another's light cone, basically the, the stipulation here is that you can find a way to stand in place and watch event A occur and then event B occur, both at your origin. So those two events we can view as no space, uh, sorry, yeah, no space difference, only time difference. And the reason why I want to kind of uh, describe that is think about what it means to be simultaneous. If two bursts go off simultaneously, that means that, at least according to you, you heard this finger snap at the same time, at, at the same time instant as that. In other words, if you were to view them as space-time events, X, Y, Z, and T, the X and the Y and the Z might be different, but the T is the same. So it's the exact opposite of what we just talked about. If two events are time-like separated, the only thing that separates them is if you wait long enough in time, you don't move. For this type of events, simultaneous events, they are strictly separated in, in space. They occur exactly the same time, without any without any time difference. So they're, they're the exact opposite of each other, basically. So these are two events which have the same T coordinate. And here's where you should start to kind of be saying, hey, Tony, you need to be more careful about that. I can't just say they have the same T coordinate according to whom. And so specifically, this is why this becomes kind of a big deal. Because now we have to say they have the same coordinate in a specific reference frame. S, for example. Or you can call it whatever you want. But the important thing is that you have to define your reference frame before you can define how, what it means to be simultaneous. And here's the crazy thing about that. Now that we've said, okay, they're simultaneous because they have the same T variable, does that mean that in any other reference frame, so let's say any other frame S prime, if we convert those space-time events using Lorentz transformations, if you convert the T variables for, let's say, event A and event B, are we guaranteed that TA prime and TB prime the, the time vari the time coordinates in S prime are also going to be the same. And, and hopefully you can kind of already know that if they're simultaneous here, we can pretty much guarantee they're not going to be simultaneous in any other frame. Because we know that the, we know that X doesn't just translate to X prime. T doesn't just translate to T prime. There's always going to be more to it. And so if we know that there's two events that are offset, if two events are simultaneous in one frame, we can predict, and we'll see why this has to be true, no other frame, at least that's moving, will possibly see them simultaneous if someone else is. Or, or in other words, these events will only be simultaneous in that exact reference frame and none other, which is just a crazy thing. And, and I'll go even further to, to, to tell you why that just, it's, it's even stranger than you might think. So, um, okay, so I've restated the problem a little bit more uh, technically. If TA equals TB, will TA prime therefore equal TB prime? And Again, like I said, the definitive answer is absolutely no. And we'll see why that will be true. So. And we'll do a, a semi-mathematical proof here. So let's assume that, and, and I'm going to draw these up on a space-time diagram here. So we now have some space-time diagram. And let's assume that for ease, um, we have two events, A and B. And we'll assume that event TA or event A happens at the same time as TB. And let's call both of those zero in S. So now what we can do is if this is my time axis and this is space, 
or x. If both of those events, a and b, happen at t0, that means that, and by the way, I should, I should be a little more careful here, that's x and that's t. Okay, so now, this is event A, and there's no reason why I have to put it at the origin other than the fact that I could have arbitrarily put it anywhere, and then I'm just going to call that to be my origin. So, I'm just, for sake of ease, I'm just going to define my origin as wherever event A is, and then now there's going to be event B. So let me draw it like this. So we can pretty clearly see that those fall on the same axis here. But now imagine some other reference frame B, or sorry, S prime. And as always, I'm not going to write this out, but it's going to be moving at velocity V in the X direction only, or whatever direction I've labeled that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write, let's say, T A prime is going to be given by, now if you recall your Lorentz transformations, given by T A minus X A V over C squared. Okay, so if we look at this here, and, and by the way, confirm that's correct. You know, don't just take it blindly. Um, I guarantee at some point I will throw some wrong formula up there, but I do believe that is correct there. Now, in this case, if you take a look at how this transforms, specifically event A, we know that the t-coordinate of event A is zero, and it's pretty clear we've also drawn this so that the x-position of A is zero. And that's why I said we're defining it to be at the origin. So this term here is going to drop out because event A happens to be at the reference frame for frame S. Or it happens to be at the origin of frame S. So this becomes gamma TA, and that's fine. I don't need to simplify that any further. Now if I look at event B, TB prime, I do the same thing, gamma TB minus X b v over c squared and now if we look at event b the only way event b could have an x variable of zero is if it's also at the origin meaning that it's actually the exact same thing as event a so since i've drawn this so that event b is not on top of event a clearly event b will have a non-zero x coordinate and what that means is that this whole thing can't be simplified further so we're going to take whatever the time is on uh, for event B, which was zero, if you recall, and now we're going to subtract something from it. So if we kind of if we take a look at what we what we already had, we knew that T A prime equaled gamma T A, but now if you recall, this actually just equaled zero. I didn't fill that in before, but we can do that now. So we can see that here T A prime will in fact be zero. Because actually, and I should have done this for both of those terms were zero. So it does just evaluate to zero. But now what happens, TB prime equals gamma TB. And that does drop out. But the second term does not. Minus gamma V over C squared XB. Which is not zero, by the way. I don't care what it is, all I care about is the fact that it's not zero. So, TB prime equals zero, oops, sorry, TA prime, TB prime does not equal zero, therefore, TB prime does not equal TA prime, therefore, the events are not simultaneous. This could all, almost be a uh, Yoda-esque grammar. So simultaneous, it is not. Uh, no, what, what, I was actually, what I was actually trying to say is that simultaneity is lost. Or, that's just a fancy way of saying, they are not simultaneous. Oh, and th that's a really strange thing to consider. And specifically, if we look a little bit more closely 
uh, the actual, we can get a little bit further with this, and we, we see that TB is minus gamma V over C squared XB. And then again over here, let's see. XB, we had drawn originally as positive. So basically, we see that one of these times will be zero, and the other time actually will be in fact negative. Now, is that a problem? No, no more than if, they're, they're, if there's always positive. At this point, positive and negative don't really matter. It's just a separate direction. Um, it's relative though to the person who's observing. That's the important thing. Uh, so here, let me describe what this would look like. Person A, standing here, click. So you hear it out of both ears at the same time. Now, some other observer, and we had already said that other observer is going to be moving in the positive direction as normal. In this case here, they're moving forwards. In this case, as they move forwards, and now we have to kind of imagine like superimposed stationary me as moving me walks by, but as moving me walks by, first of all, now remember this is event A, this is event B, they should both happen at the same time for the stationary observer. The moving observer is going to see this. Remember, TB is slightly negative. So he's going to come up, he's going to hear, and then that, and then he's going to move on. So again, stationary observer, moving observer. Isn't that crazy? They no longer agree on the order of events. And there's one more. Let's consider a case where a third observer is moving this way. So what that means is if we go back to our transformations, the only thing that we have to change is V becomes negative V. So event A, for, for this backwards moving observer, event A is still going to happen at, that, at zero. But event B, now when you actually do this calculation, you get to the end, you see that the time for event B, according to the backwards observer, is going to be, you know, some multiple negative gamma V. But now if they have a negative velocity, that third observer would actually see that as they come by, TB will be positive. So let me try to act this out. Stationary observer, that's supposed to be at the same time. Mover with positive V sees this. Mover with negative V sees this. They see event B happen at a later time. This guy sees event B happen at an earlier time. Isn't that nuts? Like, I mean, literally we can see directly that all three observers disagree on the order of events. So they literally can't say the earlier event to anyone else. This guy sees that one go first. This guy sees that one go first. This guy sees both of them go first. And that's why we say that sim any sort of simultaneity is lost. And even more importantly, any relative ordering between those events is frame dependent. So you, you simply can't say the earlier event if the events are separated like that. So this is even one step further back into the, the realm of like, nothing will ever make sense if we, keep, if we keep doing this. Now, the good news is that the only thing that's wrong is your intuition, which is kind of a big deal. But if you realize that actually the math is perfectly fine, you don't need to adjust that. You just need to come to terms with the math, what it means. That's why things are still a little bit kind of fighting in your head, probably. Um, so by the way, these two events, to be clear, we saw that there was a reference frame where they were simultaneous. And if that's true, something really important happens. We call these events space-like events. And I'll get to that here in a moment. I'm going to take a, a quick break.